it's time to get our lives together. In this video, I am going to be talking about something that I feel like there isn't that much clarity on, especially if you're not in tech or you're going into tech. It's hard to know the difference between a front-end developer and a back-end developer. We're going to talk about that and hopefully I answer some of your questions. But before we begin, my name is Ben Dundod. I have a bachelor's of science in computer science and two minors in math and organized study. Currently a full stack software developer in Los Angeles, California. On this channel, we are all about getting our lives together, how to get into tech, computer science, and lifestyle. So if that interests you, please keep on watching. God, can you tell what my favorite color is right now? If you're looking for the difference between back-end and front-end development, then you are looking under the umbrella of web development. In this video, I'm going to try to not use um, technical terms because I want everyone to be able to understand what I'm trying to convey. So first, let's talk about front end. The front end of a web application is basically what you are looking at on the screen. It's what the user interacts with. It's everything that you see on the internet, even this YouTube video um, that you're watching right now, where the video is placed, where the thumbnails are, all of those things are created by front-end developers. And it's all created by a mix of front-end languages like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that's being controlled by your browser. Either when you go on a website or app and everything is just so seamless and beautiful and just makes your entire experience better, you know when you go on a website or an app and it's so trash that you literally physically need to leave, you can thank a front-end developer for that. I put this. So in order to create that beautiful and immersive user experience, front-end developers need to learn a mix of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And these languages are usually expressed by frameworks like Vue.js, Angular, Bootstrap, etc. So you need to be familiar with one of those frameworks as well. There are also other technical things that they learn like jQuery and Ajax, but that's a totally separate video. Again, I'm trying not to make this too technical. So front-end devs work really closely with the UI UX team to make sure that the user interface is what is being specified in the mockups and mockups change a lot. They're also making sure that the deliverables are being met, especially with front-end because this is like physically what the business group or the client is seeing. So they are constantly in communication to make sure nothing has to drastically change. This is a great path for people who are technical but are very visual people because one, you can see your results immediately on the screen in a visual way. And two, you can really make an impact on a user experience. So let's use the example of a race car, which is one of my favorite analogies that I learned from my mentor when I was in college um, as a student backend developer, where the seats, the steering wheel goes, the carpets in the car, all of those things, what those look like and where they're placed. That is what a front-end developer creates. Now, let's go into back-end. The back-end of an application is where the actual functionality of these things that you're looking at comes from. It's where data is stored. It's basically the backbone of the entire application. So in order to even make an application, server, data communication, all that kind of stuff, a back-end developer needs to know a server-side language like uh, PHP, Python, Java, whatever. Ruby on Rails also is a good one, and I believe a lot of boot camps teach Ruby on Rails. And each of these have their own frameworks that you would be using. So Python has Django, which I believe is actually a full stack framework. PHP has Laravel, which I use at work. Java has Spring, which I've never used. And then in addition to those, you need to be familiar with tools like MySQL so that you can manipulate data and serve it back to the front end. So back end devs work closely with front end developers just to make sure that deliverables are being met, things are working properly. I guess it depends on your company, but deliverables can definitely vary and change a lot. So they are also in constant communication with front end developers and the business group. Um, there's a misconception that uh, software developers are like, they only work by themselves. They don't need to talk to anybody. They can be introverts. Not true. I'm an introvert and I know damn well that I talk to people every single day, even remote. We still have our stand-ups. We still have our weekly meetings over um, 
Microsoft team. No, we don't do video because <laughs> we're still IT. So we don't do video, but uh, we're still in audio communication with each other all the time, talking with my, in Microsoft Teams. So you can't escape human interaction, even when you're going into tech. So back to our race car example, uh, we talked about how front end uh, designs the seats, where the steering wheel is, things like that. So the front or the, the back end, they build the engine, the piston, the brakes, uh, whatever's in a car. The back end is creating that. So as you can see, the front end developer creates what the car functionally looks like, but the back end puts in the guts in order to make the car move. Going on with that analogy, DevOps creates the racetrack. Okay, bonus, what's full stack? Full stack, um, it doesn't sound intuitive, but basically it's a blend of both. It's front end and back end development combined. Meaning you can develop in both, meaning that you can do everything, meaning you have to know everything. So I am a full stack developer. So in my case, in the front end, I, in my stack at work, we use BU, and then the back end we use Laravel. And then we also use PostgreSQL, I never know how to pronounce that for database manipulation. Now, whether it's easier or harder to learn front end or back end, it honestly depends on the person. I can tell you my experience. I started off obviously as back end because in my university we learned Java. So um, when I went into my student developer job on campus, it was a web developer position. You have to choose either you're going to be a back end track or a front end track or DevOps. I chose back end because I was like, well, I don't know what the hell front end is. So I was like, I'm just gonna go with what I know, even though I had no idea how different the um, Laravel framework would be from like everything I've learned in, in college. My other peers who all took the front end track, they kept telling me that front end was way easier than back end. Uh, I believed them because we were all there dying while they were just cheering. <laughs> While they were changing colors of words, I was, we were, we were salty. We were definitely salty. I knew some front end because I was a scrum master for a few of my projects on campus. So I knew my way around it. I didn't consider myself a full stack developer. I was like classically trained as back end. It wasn't until I graduated and got my first job as a full stack developer, which I have plenty of stories about how I got that. But, um, that wasn't until I really like learned the true mechanics of front end development, like working with JavaScript specifically. So it was um, harder than I anticipated. It's actually hard, especially when you're learning just straight out of college or right into industry. It was like, Ooh! so it was hard. I've asked a lot of my front end friends and um, my friends who were full stack, what track would be best to learn first if you wanted to be a full stack developer. The consensus is, it may be better to learn a backend language first and then work your way up to a front-end framework. I hope that helps. Honestly, it really depends on the person because you might start learning Python or Java or using the Laravel framework and realize you don't even like it. So it really depends on the person. I, I say dabble in both and see which is more fun to you and then work from there. Okay. Uh, I think I covered everything. So summary, front end development is developers who mainly work on the user experience and the user interface. They code where things go. That's as simply as I can put it. It's a lot more complex than that. And I hope I'm not oversimplifying it. Back end development mainly works with the functionality of those components that the front end developer makes and sends the data to the front end as well. So in this YouTube page right now, in the recommended, one of my videos is there, the front end person is going to code where that recommended column is. They're going to hit an API. I said I wasn't going to use tactical. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, the front end person is going to code where the column is going to go. The backend person is going to supply that data. Does that make sense? I hope I even explained that correctly. I hope that there was some clarity in that, honestly. Please ask any questions below. There's so many friends who answer questions when sometimes I'm not able to, and obviously I will answer as many questions as I can from my own experience as 
a full stack developer and as a backend developer as well. So I will link some resources down below uh, for more detailed explanations on front end development and back end development. Programming is a tough road, but if you practice every day, you are diligent and you are enjoying yourself, it will get easier. So with that being said, friends, I hope you have a great rest of your day or night whenever you're watching this and to stay safe, keep washing your hands and keep doing things that make you mentally happy. Because I know it's a hard time right now, but I promise you we will get through it. Okay. So I'll see you later. Bye.